welcome back to the ib youtube channel in today's class we're going to be learning how to make this beautiful cupped corset that we see here it has a two yoke on the upper part and then it has this beautiful cupped corset on the lower part so for the back the back has a zipper as well as a lacing back as you can see so you can decide to work with your zipper and then you can also snatch your waist a little bit with your lacing bar so you can see now that i have put my rope in the lacing bar i can see how beautiful it is looking it's a very simple tutorial and beginner friendly this is something I like to learn stay tuned to the end okay so i'm going to start with drafting my basic bodies my shoulder is 14 divided by 2 is 17 so i'm going to add half an inch to that for turning the ham hole area so i have seven and a half inches here so here the ham hole is 14 inches so 14 inches divided by two is seven so here i'm going to mark seven inches for my arm hole my bust point is nine and a half my under bust is 12 and a half inches and the half length is 17. so i'll make all of this into a straight line okay so here I've come down by one inch from my shoulder slope. So the same seven and a half inches I took on the arm hole area on the shoulder area and taking it downwards here like this. I'm going to get the midpoint of that and then the midpoint I'm going to come in by half an inch. So here I'm going to take my bust measurement. The bust is 35 inches where by four is going to give me around 8.75. So I'm going to mark that. And then I'm going to link these three points together. So to create your shoulder slope, you just need to mark your neck width. I'm working with three inches. I'll connect from my shoulder slope, and then I'm going to connect from here to here to here. So I'll place my curve ruler like that, and then connect the three points together. So the next thing is your bust band measurement. Mine is eight inches. It's very by two. That's four. So on my, this is my bust point, this is the under bust, and this is the waist. So on the under bust line, I'm going to mark the 4 inches, I'll do the same thing on the waist line, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bust point as well. So I'll make all of this into a straight line, and then on my shoulder here, I'm going to get the middle of the shoulder and then i'll connect from that point as well to my first point so for my dart on the under bust i'm going to take a dart of one inch on both sides i'll do the same thing on my waistline as well and then i'm going to connect that so my marker is okay so from there using my cultula, I'm going to connect to my to my bust point. So it is connected now. The next thing I'm going to do is to determine the depth of my neckline. So from here, okay, you can use your bust point as your reference. So my bust point is nine and a half. I can go like one inch higher than my bust point or one and a half inches depending on how much you're willing to expose so here if i go one inch higher it's going to be around 8.5 so i'll just do 1.25 so i'm working with 8.25 as my neck depth okay that's how deep you want it to be or i can just work with 8.5 okay so that's one inch coming up from my bust point so here for that line between your corset i want it to be one inch so on four that's going to be half an inch so on that depth i'll come up outwards by half an inch just like this okay and then for the height of my corset is a bit high so from my bust point area here i'm going to come up by four inches okay depends on how high you want your corset to be and then from there i'm going to connect for my neckline okay so i'm going to use my curve driller to make that connection okay so that's my neck point so now to form our curve you just need to place your ruler from here to your under bust and that is going to form my first curve so for the second curve all you just need to do is to measure the space that you have here 
and then you divide that by two so you have about 1.5 there so dividing it by two i have it around here so that's where you connect your second cup but before that i want to take the dart on my on this part as well so to do that i'm just going to come down here by like half an inch okay this is just for me to not ruin my ample line so after coming down there i'm going to go ahead and mark my that so here i used one inch on both sides so that's what i want to use on this side as well i'm marking one inch on both sides and then i'm going to connect that to my to my um to my bust point sorry okay on this side as well i'm going to connect it to my bust point so this is the that that i'm going to be taking for this okay so now to connect my neckline i just want to confirm what i have here i have about 3.75 so what i have here is what i want to measure on this side as well so that i can easily join them together so here the depth that i have removed here is supposed to be around two inches because i took one inch on both sides so i'm just going to go ahead and replace this dart here okay so now the next thing i want to do is to connect my neckline to that point using my curve trailer okay so you just make sure you blend everything very well so after that i can just go ahead and connect my bust cup to that point that i have there so you can see now that our two cups are formed so on the bust line i'm going to add one and a half inch for my seam allowance on the waistline you're going to take your waist measurement the waist is 26 divided by 46.5 so here I have three inches so i'm just going to skip the dart and continue my measurement so 6.5 is here and then i'm going to add one and a half inch seam allowance to that as well so i'm going to connect this as my side seam so now i'll go ahead and cut this out and then this upper part now becomes my yoke okay so i'll cut my yoke just like i have it like this up to this point so when i sew this lower part i'll try to reconcile it especially because of this uh, that that we are taking here but there is a, there's another way you can cut your yoke by the time we have sewn this to make sure that this part is taken care of so i'm going to be showing us how to do that later in this video so now what i'm going to do is just to label this cup so that i don't get confused by the time i cut it out and i'm going to go ahead now and draft the back so the back pattern is drafted like we normally draft our back pattern and this is my zipper allowance so if you're going to be lifting up the back you can go ahead and cut off this allowance and then you come here by one inch and then you connect it but for me i want to use a zipper and also i'm going to be installing a lacing bar on this so i'll keep my zipper allowance the only thing i'm going to the back is to hide my keyhole neckline so here i'm going to retain my dart point and then i'm going to bring my curve ruler okay and then i'll connect it to the neck point like this to form my keyhole neckline okay and this is what my yoke for the back looks like so i'll go ahead now and cut it this part is the yoke and this lower part is the main body so you can label this your center back and your side back then i'm going to cut this out so i'm starting with the front you can see i just came in by the half an inch and then i'm going to cut my neckline so here you can just hold again to check that your neckline corresponds so you can see if it does not correspond at this point you can just close it and connect them together so that it will be easier for you to sew and I'll remove the lower part now and then I'm just going to cut this upper part as well and that is going to be my U so the neck line I'm going to be working with is 3 inches by 4 inches or 4 and a half inches I'm going to be replacing this with a corset mesh 
okay so this is my yoke you can also tighten your yoke with it that so that you have something equal and whatever it is that you have taken on this part you are going to replace it back on your hand hole so that's and that way you can reconcile what you have here so the next thing is to take off my dad and cut off the cups so these are my pattern pieces for the front and then for the back this is my side back my center back okay and this is my yoke okay so i'll go ahead and cut all of this on my fabric and lining and then we'll cut the lower part of the dress so for the lower part of the skirt i'm cutting directly on my fabric i have folded my fabric into four so i fold into two first as you can see and then i'm folding into four again so when you're folding the fourth one you make sure you leave one inch allowance for your zipper okay so and i folded with my hip measurement that's my largest measurement so the length that you're going to work with my full length is 40 inches remember i already went up by 17 inches for my waist okay for my half length there so here i have 40 inches here and then i added two inches allowance for hemming so that's what i have here so now I'm going to maintain my 17 inches. You can see now that I went up by 17 inches. And then from there, I'm going to take my hip line measurement. So the hip line that I'm working with is 26 inches. So I'll have half an inch for joining on the upper part of that. And I'll have 26 and half inches. So here is my 26 and half inches. And then I'm going to make that into a straight line. Okay. You can curl here and then come up by two inches so that you will know where your allowance starts from. So on the waistline here, I'm going to take my waist measurement. Remember, my waist is 26 divided by four is six and a half. So I have six and a half inches here, and then I'm going to mark one inch for my dart and then one and a half inches for my same allowance okay and then on the hip line the hip i'm working with is 38 inches 38 divided by four is nine and a half so i'll mark the nine and a half inches here and then i'm going to come in and mark one and a half inches for my same allowance so here on the hem from your hip depending on how tapered you want it to be remember the hip is nine and a half so you can go inwards by one inch or one and a half inches so i'm just doing one inch and then i'm marking it and half so from there i'm going to take my seam allowance as well and then i have one and a half inches and all you want to do is bring your curved ruler and then connect all of this together i'm sorry i don't know if the chalk is showing well okay and then from there i'm going to connect to my to my full length okay so i'll get a better cuff so i'm using my leg cuff to do this that can give me the perfect shape that i want and then i'm just going to connect like this okay and that is all you need to do for your skirt so here i'm just going to mark my four inches for that that's your bust span and then i'm going to lift it up so that i can give it the notch on that point <laughs> can also draw out your dart but i'm going to do that when i'm sewing so now what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and cut out what i have chopped okay so this is my skirt this is the front and this is the back so here you want to notch your zipper allowance for the back as well before you remove your your front so now i'll go ahead and cut lining for this as well so i have cut that lining for both the front and back this is the back and this is the front and if you notice i made my lining shorter by one inch so that i'll have my a little bit of my entire folding inwards like this okay so now i'll bring the upper part now so i have cut the main bodies the upper part and the lining as well this is the center front 
this is the side front and you can see that i added my half an inch allowance to wear necessary this is the side back and this is the center back so you just go ahead and notch your zipper allowance there and then for the main bodies i added a very soft stay okay and then i'm working with a spider lining so the lining is okay i'm not adding anything to the lining and then for the cups i went ahead to iron my wording to the main cup as well and then for the lining i just ironed the soft stay on the lining of the cup as well so this is the center front and this is the side front so the next thing is to start to join them together so i'm going to start by joining the center front to the side front you can also close your that before you cut it so you just close it together like this before you cut it but i just decided to leave mine like this so i'll join the center front to the side front like this and then for my cups i'll go ahead and join the center front and side front so i'll just lift my paper on it like this and take it one after the other so that i don't get confused or you just notch that side that you're going to be joining together you can see the way i notched mine so that i will easily know what i'm doing so i'll go ahead and join all of the cups together just like this you just place them like this and then so then i'll iron it so that is it for the front i'll bring this back to show us how we're going to join it to the lower part and then for the back i'm going to go ahead now and join my yoke so this is my side back and this is my center back and this is my yoke for the back so for the yoke i cut four of these because i'm going to be using them to turn out each other so what i'm going to do now is to take it two two okay one main bodies and one lining okay so i'll just take it like this and then i'll go ahead and go to the sewing machine and sew so i'm going to sew it on the neckline as well as this keyhole part after sewing it i'm going to turn it out and then i'm going to join my center back to my side back before i sew my yoke remember the yoke starts from your from your that line okay so it's not going to be extending to this point so i'll just place it here now and then i'm going to sew it and turn it out but remember i said i want to install a lacing band to this so that i can use my zipper and then i'll also i can also lace it up just like we lace our normal corset so i'm going to drop the link on that in the comment section if you don't know how you can put it but i'm going to be inserting the lacing band in between this center back and side back in between this lining this dart that i have here that's why i did not close my dart so if you don't know how to do that i'm going to drop the link like i said this video is already very long so i'll do go ahead and do all of that now so by the time i finish this is what the yoke is going to look like you can see the keyhole that we have there i'll do this and bring it back to show us what we have so i have gone ahead to join the center front as you can see and then you go ahead and press open your seam line like this i did the same thing for the lining as well and then i've ironed my seam open so now i'll work on the main bodies on the main bodies i want to add five bony channels on it so one at the center one at the dart lines and then i'm going to be placing one by this side so for uniformity i'll just put it on fold and then notch where i'll be placing these channels okay so that i can have same thing on both sides so now for the center i'm simply going to notch it on the upper side and then on the lower side okay the dart line is easy i can see it there and then on this side from the dart line i'm just going to measure around two inches and then i've notched it so the same way i've notched it i'll go over to the upper side and then i'm going to notch where i want it to be so you just need to notch it all around so that i have the same thing on both sides so after notching it i'm going to open it up and then with my ruler i'm going to mark what i've notched out so that i can easily work with it when i get to my machine so now i'm marking it out and then i'm going to mark the last one for the dart line the seam that i have there is going to guide me so now these are my five bony channels so i'm using my my bias my black bias as my channel you can also use a plain fabric and then you just iron the iron is just like they've ironed this and i'm going to place it on that point where i want to sew my 
my casing tool and then I'm going to run my stitch on both sides so I'll do the same thing for all the five channels okay so I have gone ahead to create these channels and you can see how beautiful they are looking and like I said you can also use your fabric to do this as well so now these are my cups I have joined the cups and then I've ironed my seam you can see now that my seam line is open you can also place maybe a hemming gum here to ease your ironing so this is what i have i can see the depth that i have for this cup so this is the lining for the cups as well i have ironed it so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and sew my cup to the space that i have here i'll do this for both the main fabric and the lining so i have gone ahead to sew it and you make sure that your dart aligns and it must be exactly the same thing because remember we cut the we cut the cup from the main body so it should just fit and you watch out for your dart lines like this so you make sure everything aligns so that you're not going to run into any issues when you want to turn it so this is the lining this is the main fabric you just go ahead and iron this down so now for me the wording that i used in padding this is very very thick so i just i removed it i detached it from the allowance so the wording that is on the allowance i want to trim it down to the barest minimum so that my cup can relax well you can also join your wording separately so that i can just glue it to the cup like a ready-made bra cup after you have joined it together you have a zigzag machine that you can use to attach them together that you can use to attach your wordings together you can also do that okay so after sewing the cup separately and the wording separately you just go ahead and then place them on each other and use your iron to glue them together but for me i sew it together so i'm just trying to reduce it you can see i'm reducing the bulkiness that is around that area okay so now to attach the yoke like i said remember this is our yoke so you can actually go ahead and cut your yoke like this then you reshape it when you're done but you can see that the dust that we have taken here is making it not to just fit just like we want so what i'm going to do now is just use this to cut out my yoke and to do this i put my mesh on yoke by four because i'm cutting the fabric and the lining together and then my main body is like this remember i'm going to be sewing it to this i have put this on fold as well so what i'm going to do is just to match this up together center front against the center front of the yoke okay you can hold this with a pin so i've placed them on each other like this you can also cut it on a paper before you transfer it to your fabric so now the next thing you're going to do is to take your tape remember our under bust is 12 and a half so that's going to be your reference point the under bust that you have sewn here you're going to place your tape on 12 and a half and place it on the under bust and then you just bring it upward like that so that you can get your shoulder line so now i have my 12.5 inches here and this here becomes my shoulder line so i'm going to make it into a straight line just like that so here i'm going to take my neck width which is three inches and then my shoulder my shoulder is 7.5 remember it's seven inches and then i had it half an inch for turning the ham hole so i have 7.5 inches here so here i'm going to come down by one inch for my shoulder slope and then i'm going to connect it to my neck point so my neck depth is going to be four inches okay you can do four inches you can do four and a half but i'm still going to turn it so by the time i turn it it's going to be around four and a half inches and then i'm going to use my ruler to connect that point so now i've placed it and then i'm going to mark around it just like this so so what i'm going to do next is to mark this shape that i have remember we are sewing it to this so you want it to be exactly the same you can't cut it directly because you need to have allowance to join it so that's why i'm going to use my chalk to mark it out first and then by the time i remove it i'll be able to add my same allowance to it so now i have marked that shape now and i can remove it so what i'm going to do now is to draw out my armhole remember we have not drawn the armhole okay so to do that the same 7.5 inches that i marked there i'm going to mark it here as well 
so that I can have a straight line just like we did earlier in the video and then you mark out your arm hole depth my arm hole depth is 7 inches so on that point I'm going to locate the midpoint and then go in by half an inch and draw my arm hole line I have drawn it, I'm sorry it's not so feasible I don't want to shift it so much so I'm just trying to remark it so that we can see so this is the neck curve this is the arm hole and this is the shoulder line so when you are cutting it you make sure you add allowance on the shoulder okay so I'm adding half an inch on my shoulder just like this and then here when you are cutting the neckline cover as well you had your allowance so i've cut it out with the allowance and you can see that this easily fits into my body so that's another way you can cut your yoke especially if you want to avoid the gaping so what i'm going to do now is to open this up and then i'll go ahead and join the neckline and the armhole together okay i'll sew it on the neckline and then on the armhole so that i can turn it out neatly okay so my yoke is neatly turned now so you go ahead and iron it and then you bring in your bodies and just sew it to it so you can see how well it just fits okay so now that is another way you can cut your yoke so especially if you cut your corset in the form of your off shoulder so you can easily cut your yoke by just folding your fabric and measuring it that way so i'll go ahead now and sew this to my corset and then after sewing it i'm going to lay my lining on it as well and then sew the lining but before then i want to join the shoulder of this together so that it will be easier for me to work with so to join the shoulder this is my back I have already turned my back with lining as you can see you can see that it is neat and then i've attached my yoke as well i turned the yoke separately and then fixed it in and then here i'm going to put my zipper remember we have the zipper allowance and then on this lacing bar that i have here i'm going to install my eyelet holes so that i can also lace it up with my with my rope okay so now to join this what i'm going to do remember i have already sealed this part off before i seal the lower part of this by joining it to the other this to the half length i'll go ahead and use this to turn my shoulder first so i'll just place it like this and then dip my hand inside okay inside the lining and the main bodies and then i'll bring it out like this so that i can go ahead and sew neatly just like we turn our normal shoulder so you can see so now i'll go ahead and join this for both sides so the shoulder is neatly turned now as you can see so what i'm going to do next is to go ahead and join the yoke of the front together and then turn it with the lining as well so i have joined my net my corset mesh to it and you can see how lovely it is you don't want your corset mesh to be packing that's why you have to get it right and then this is what it looks like on the inside after turning it with my lining so now while turning it i added hemming gum on the lining part so that i can use that to iron everything out neatly and then i also sew it on the side just like this i'm trying to make this as beginner friendly as possible so i'm not going to be turning it um, line to line i'm just doing everything separately so now that is what we have you go ahead now and iron this so now we'll take this aside and work on the lower part which is the skirt so for my skirt i have gone ahead to hold all of my darts you can see this is the lining for the front this is the main fabric for the front and then this is the lining and main fabric for the back all the that has been held so what i'm going to do now is to bring my half length okay and then i'm going to sew the waist together okay after sewing the waist together i'm going to turn with my lining okay so i'll sew my main bodies first and then i'm going to turn it with the lining and then i'm going to sew it on the hem so i'll still show us how i'm going to do all of this so i have joined it like this on the waistline 
so I'm just going to flip it back and then use my lining to cover all of these rough edges so after sewing my lining to cover it up I'll still find a way to sew all the M of my lining as well so that it can also be neat so I'll go ahead and sew it then after that I'm going to sew the hem and sew so I have gone ahead to fix my lining you can see this is what the inside looks like you can see how neat it is on the inside as well so on the hem you can see that a little bit of my Ankara fabric is here that was why I made the lining shorter by one inch so this is what the inside looks like now and this is the outside so the same thing I have done on this I'll go ahead and do to the back as well so I'm going to have to, use, to fix my lining at the back. You can see how clean it is at the back as well. And then I installed my zipper. So the next thing you want to do now is to match the side seam together. And then you go ahead and take your measurement and shape the side. So here you take your bust measurement, your waist measurement, your hip. And then you connect everything. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to sew my side seam together okay so i have joined the side seams together now and this is what my dress is looking like so you just go ahead and iron it properly okay so this is what it looks like on the other side i have gone ahead to fix my my um rope okay i'm using velvet bias as my lacing rope you can also use regular bias or whatever it is that you want to use you can also use the main fabric for this and if you notice you will see that it has a zipper underneath the the lacing so you can just decide to wear it with your actual waistline with your zipper or you just snatch your waist a little bit with the lacing that we attached and the tutorial on how i did this lacing bar is already on the channel as well i'll drop the link in the comment section down below so now the next thing i want to do to this dress is to embellish the cup area with these trimmings that i have here so i'll just deconstruct the trimming and then place it at the cup area and then i'm going to be using this crystal beads it's a size 4 crystal bead and i'm going to use it to create like a sleeve illusion on the sleeve area so i'll go ahead and do that now okay so this is what our corset looks like on the mannequin you can see that i embellished the cupped the cup area with some trimmings okay so i filmed a small tutorial on that especially for beginners i'm going to upload it in the channel and drop the link in the comment section down below but you can see that our yoke is not packing and it's really beautiful so this is what the back looks like you can see our zipper is underneath the lacing that we have there and then i have a tutorial on that as well i'm going to drop it in the comment section i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me kindly like comment and share thank you